Hey there, everybody. Uh, welcome to another edition of Flies and Beer. Uh, today, I'm finally getting a video out for my portly emerger. It's been kind of in development for about two and a half years now. Uh, people are asking me, can you got a fly tying video for that fly? And I always say, well, I don't have it yet because I'm still working on it. I think I have it where I want it now, so I'm going to do the tying video. Um, I have an appropriate beer for something called the Portly Emerger. It is my uh, Times Square Porter, um, a uh, home-brewed beer that I brewed. Um, my wife and I renewed our vows on uh, New Year's Eve, and this was one of the beers that I brewed uh, for that occasion. Um, it's got some mint and cacao nibs, so it's like an after eight, but beer. Uh, if you imagine what that would be like, that's what this is. So let's get to the tie-in video. So this is my portly emerger. It's a little crooked because it's the only way you can kind of see all the parts all at once. Um, so the kind of premise of this flyer, the reason I developed it was I needed an emerger small fly that could stay afloat in rougher water. You know, parachute atoms, things like that, a clink hammer, I don't find that they stay afloat well enough because they rely only on the hackle. This has some foam built into it, which I find gives it the extra flotation that the fly needs, yet making it appear like a vulnerable emerging insect near the surface. Um, cutthroats love it. It's like candy, uh, even in a pool where the water is very slow and the fish are super picky. I can usually get them to take this fly. So that was kind of the development of the fly. You can see it's a parachute style, but there's also this extra little bit of foam back here. I'll put a materials list uh, picture up here on the on the video here. Um, but what the parts are basically is we got just some mallard flank right here. Um, these are bristles from a dollar store paintbrush. This um, kind of trailing shuck is just uh, tinsel, pearl tinsel um, in either pearl yellow or just in pearl. Um, and then just some two millimeter um, craft foam for both the uh, kind of hump here as well as for the parachute post and then just uh, regular hackle um, for that. And then for the body, there's also some quill, some stripped, chemically stripped peacock quill um, that's put in there. And of course, you know, the key ingredient in a lot of flies, solar res, um, UV cure. In this case, I use the thin hard um, to do all the curing. All right, well, um, so this one here is a size 12, but I'm gonna tie a size 10 just cause it's a little bit easier to see everything. And I'm tying on my new vise. Got myself a Renzetti Traveler 2200 and I am loving it. I guess I just didn't know what I was missing uh, with those uh, vices I had before. Uh, got this one at the fly shop I guide through out fly fishing in Calgary. Head on in there if you're in the area and you're looking for a new vice. They got all kinds of options, but they got tons of these uh, as well. Talk to Josh or Andrew or Ty um, and they'll all give you a hand uh, looking and finding what you need. All right, so we'll take that one out and we'll get the size 10 in the jaws of the new vise here. Actually, I think I need to back that off just a little bit because it's a bigger hook. Perfect. Love this cam too. Okay, so uh, going to be tying on 70 denier olive and we'll just start it. I like to give the whole hook a good coating of the thread. Just helps to anchor everything in. Find that that works uh, really well. And you got to go all the way back part way down the band. And so what I do now when I get to this point is I actually release the fly and turn it so that I can get the uh, mallard flank tied in more on the bend of the hook. Okay, so you can see there it's pretty far down the hook where we're going to uh, tie in our mallard flank. I'll use uh, white mallard, like natural mallard flank. I also use the dyed stuff. This stuff is like olive or something. So I'm gonna take off a pretty good chunk of it there. So there we go. All right, just gonna get that kind of all together here. Oh, I got the length just the way I like it. I like the length of that tail to be just a little long. This gives it more of that enticement for the for the trout underneath the water and then I tie in a lot of this kind of going back 
just to give me a little extra bulk on this part because it is the trailing chuck. I used to do this with midge tubing, um, which made the back end, uh, the trailing chuck fatter and probably more realistic looking, but it added too much weight to the fly. And I found that after I switched to tinsel instead, I still got the shiny kind of, you know, it's, it's getting empty kind of look um, to it um, without the extra weight. And so I've kind of gone away from the midge tubing. Um, it's easier to tie with the, with the tinsel than it is with the tubing. And I just find that the tubing, this stuff is lighter. This fly floats better now than it did in some of its previous iterations. Um, something else for you, thinking about this for this summer. Um, I am thinking about kind of doing a um, kind of a name that fly. If I come up with experimental flies and I'm, I'll test them, I'll video my testing, and then I might uh, have you guys suggest names for them. So let me know in the comments if you think that's something you'd be interested in doing, helping me name some flies. Because I find I'm kind of coming up short when it comes to uh, good fly names uh, these days. So got to come up with some other way. And maybe more of you are more creative than I am. All right. So now that I obviously have a true rotary vise, um, I've got to put a little whip finish on there so this thing doesn't come undone while I'm using the rotary function here. I probably don't need to use the rotary function for this part but it's new and it's like a new toy, so I'm gonna play with it a bit. It's like anything else, I think I have to kind of get used to the technique here. But I do like being able to lay things down on a fly like this because man can you put it down so much tighter and more accurately than I could before but I also have to remember to move my finger closer to the fly as I take up material okay I like that I like being able to swing that thing out of the way so that was the tinsel that we just put in. We're just gonna cut that off. So it only goes up yeah, about this far. Okay. Um, and then we're gonna give it a tan. So not a lot, just kind of enough to seal it and make it maybe just slightly fatter than the rest of the fly. Whew, after being out in the sun, getting that tan, I'm thirsty. <sighs> All right. So just kind of give you a look here. Okay. You can see it's, you know, sparkly. It all depends on kind of how the light is falling on it, but it's got the look it needs to have. And now I'm going to rotate the hook around so that the upper part is now flatter. Okay. Ooh, that was close. You guys all know that sound, right? Nicking of the thread. All right, so here's the difference between a size 10 and a size 12 in the portly merger. The number of tail fibers. When I tie this, oh, I think I got four there. When I tie this in a size 10, I make it a three-tailed fly. When I tie it in size 12, I make it a two. So I got three of those and I just set them down where I can kind of get at them easily. And I am not the guy that can tie in tail fibers at the same time. Never have been. Whether it's biots or what, I just can't seem to make a go of it that way. All right, so in terms of length, that's what we're looking at. I don't need them too terribly long. Okay, so get an idea here. That's the length of them. Okay, they don't have to be super long. 
Center is always the toughest one because it always wants to go to one side or another if you don't get it perfectly centered. That one ended up actually pretty perfectly centered. It's not quite depth wise, but here's the nice thing about those paintbrush fibers you can just bend them. I bend them even on the water sometimes. A fish will take it and they'll bend, and I'll just bend them back. Nice thing about those there. Easy to change the shape back to whatever you need them to be. All right. So now we've got the tails tied in. So the next thing we got to tie in is our foam. And this is going to be both the um, loop that helps with the flotation and the post. So it's two different pieces of two millimeter foam. Okay. And uh, so they need to be about that wide, maybe. So compare it to the width of the hook like so. Okay, and what I always do is I chisel it or cut it to a chisel um, just so I don't get as much bulk at the tie-in point. And do your best to make sure that all of the foam stays pretty much on the top. Otherwise, the fly will get heavy on one side and it will try to tip over on you. And you don't want that. Well, I mean, I guess it would look like a cripple. Maybe you do want that. I don't. I like it to kind of sit straight up because then the parachute post obviously sits um, straight up a lot better as well. All right, so now we're going um, up towards the eye here and we're going to tie in that piece of uh, foam there for the parachute post. I use foam for my parachute posts um, rather than like Antron yarn. I used to use that, but I just find the foam is better. Don't ask me why. I don't know why. Okay, so there I got a little bit heavy on one side, um, but I think it'll be okay here because most of it is directly on the top. It was just a little tiny bit at the end there. And that helps me actually get a bit of a taper uh, to the body as well. And then we'll go up ahead here and make a little thread dam just to get that to stand up for us. There we go. Okay, now we're going to work our way back to where we tied in the brown foam. And we are going to put in our quill. Okay, so this is just chemically stripped peacock quill. Ooh, that one's got a... Okay, so I'm going to start there. Try and get that to be mostly on the top. Some of it snuck under the bottom. That's fine. As long as it's all tied in and out of the way. Okay, and now, because I want to use the rotary function again, I'm going to whip finish that off. Move my bob and cradle back into position. Sorry, get my hand out of the way there. They can see I'm not, they're not touching wraps. I'm putting little gaps in between. Oh, that did stick up a little bit. It's so, okay, I'll get it to trap down with the quill here. There. felt that felt breaky okay got it tied in before it broke now uh, I could tell that on that spot there where I was trying to catch that little piece I still missed it so that's what fine scissors are for okay be able to get that to sit down but I, my wrapping's not great right here um, but you know what, the type of water I fish this fly in, 
Uh, most of the time, they're not getting enough of a chance to look at whether the segments are perfectly spaced or not. That's the whole reason for building this fly, was to build something that would float in faster, rougher water. All right, so I'm just putting the UV cure on there right now. Okay. 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 All right. And I got a little bit of accidental taper here with the UV cure. It got a little fatter right there in the thorax, but that's okay. The purpose is to have some stripes there to look like segmentation. I rarely tie Instagram worthy tie uh, flies. I tie fish worthy flies. There are plenty of guys on Instagram who tie Instagram worthy flies. I'll leave them to it. Okay, so I had obviously way too much of the brown foam here. So I'm gonna cut off the excess and then do the same thing. Let's see if I can let you see what I'm doing here with this. So just kind of cutting it to a point and thinning it a bit, just like that. And then tie that in and you can see that I get a pretty good loop of foam there. But I also don't go over much of the um, quill there that I, you know, took so much time and effort to lay down. So now that's in there good and snug. Okay. And it's going to act as flotation. Okay. We've got our post here. All right. The next thing we got to do is tie our hackle onto our post. Okay. That'll be nice. That hackle will work out well. So as the great... Jim Mishura always says, with your hackle, before you tie it in, you give it a brush cut. So, there, it's got a brush cut. All right. So I like to start it tied in near the eye, and then I'll go around the post with it. After that, I don't know how many years I tied for before I kind of got parachutes figured out. I tried all kinds of different uh, ways to tie parachute posts, and maybe I still don't do a great job of it, but the fish don't seem to care. Okay, so now that we've got the hackle on there, we're just going to wrap the hackle. pitch here just to lock everything in another half hitch here all right all right so we are going to now cut that off and we're pretty much done with this okay so that hackle is cut off I'll just pull out the little bits there and whoop and then we'll put a little bit of uv cure just there where i did the whip finish i'm just going to cut that thread off as well Ooh, it's making me thirsty before i give it another tan it's a very seasonal beer though it's not a, a summer beer. Although that said, I'm going to save a bottle for a trip this summer for one of those post-day reviews. Hopefully I'm up to doing that. I hopefully can get the herniated disc in my back repaired. 
before then or I won't be seeing much time on the water and a lot more time at this new vice of mine. Hopefully the purchase of a new vice is not foreshadowing that. Foreshadowing is the right word, right? I'm not an English major, I teach physics. All right, so there you have it. That post is a little bit too tall, which often happens, but hey, you can cut it a little bit shorter. So there you have it. That is the portly emerger. After a long wait to get the tying video done, that is what she looks like. Floats really well, even in like rough water, especially, you know, if you're looking at the, you know, the head of a pool where the white water is coming into the pool um, or a long run or something like that, you can usually get this to float pretty well on there. Uh, I really like it. It's become a staple in the fly box uh, for me, for guiding and for myself. Um, really enjoy it. And I hope you enjoyed the tying video. Uh, if you're looking for a guided trip with me, you can email me at midlifeflices at gmail.com uh, or call out Fly Fishing Fly Shop in Calgary uh, and ask for a mountain walk and wade with Kirby Coder. Um, let me know how you're liking the new flies and beer format. Um, kind of hoping that's going to be a, a thing that people enjoy. I'm going to have a few more uh, tying videos uh, in the weeks to come here and kind of as the tail end of tying season goes away and the start of fishing season comes. So um, let me know uh, what you think of that in the comments. Uh, any suggestions or improvements you think would help the fly? I'm always uh, open to hearing those because no fly is ever perfect. Um, but thanks for watching. Tight lines, everybody.